Hello and welcome, dear all, to the another topic on biowavers. This is a part three, and in this, BCS based biowavers will be discussed in detail. The eligibility criteria and the requirements are covered in the present video. So let's start with the video. See, first of all, we will understand the definition of biowaver and the biowaver types. So, waver means uh, not required. So, biowaver means that the in vivo bioavailability or bioequivalent studies may be waved off or those may not be considered necessary for product filing to the regulatory authorities and the approval. That's why the simple meaning is that the bio studies will not be required if the bio waiver is granted or if the product meets the requirement of bio waiver criteria. And there are different types of bio waivers. Bio waiver are based mainly on the some in vitro studies. The examples of bio waivers and bio waiver types are given by the regulatory authorities. So they are mainly four types. I have divided the biowavers in four groups. So first is doses form based biowaver in which the formulations with with drug in solubilized form. So if the formulation contains the drug in solubilized form like solution or other forms of the formulation in which the drug is present in solubilized form. So these doses forms will get biowaver. Second is BCS based biowaver. If the drug formulation contains the drug substance which belong to BCS class 1 or 3, then those formulations can get BCS based biowaver if the other requirements are fulfilled. Then is additional strength biowaver. This type of waiver requires waiver to the strengths other than the BE strengths. For example, three strength product is there like 100 mg, 50 mg and 25 mg and the applicant provides bioequivalence data on 100 mg strengths. Then the remaining strength like 50 mg and 25 mg can be given a bio waiver. Then bio is based on in vitro studies. Sometimes the product contains the material or drug substance which does not get absorbed or which are meant for the local actions. So these formulations are provided by waiver based on the in vitro studies. So in this video mainly the BCS based biover will be discussed in detail. BCS based biover is for IR formulations containing BCS class 1 and 3 drugs. This is not available for extended release or modified release formulations. Only for immediate release formulations which contain BCS class 1 and 3 drugs. Then these are granted based on the solubility and intestinal permeability. These type of biovers are recommended by the USFD, EMA and WHO for BCS based biovers. So, ICH guideline is also there, which is ICH guideline M9, which discuss in detail about the BCS based biowavers. The biowavers are granted mainly on the solubility of API. If API is having high solubility and the intestinal permeability, so permeability may be of two types like high and low, but the main requirement is highest solubility. Then requirements like the drug should not be a narrow therapeutic drug. It should be a IR formulation. If the IR formulation contain narrow therapeutic drug, then it can then the biowaver cannot be granted. The formulation should be IR formulation required to be orally administered and designed to deliver the drug to the systemic circulation and contain BCS1 or 3 drug. 
if we are trying to get biowaver for a sublingual uh, tablet then these sublingual type of tablets or orodispersible tablet or buccal tablets will not be eligible for the bcs based biowaver because the site of absorption is not the intestine for this type of product the site of absorption is oral cavity then we can check the availability of bcs based biowaver in the product specific guidance like these guidance are provided by usfda and also sometimes these are provided by the emea so example you can check like hydroxychloroquine tablets which is available with bcs3 option and example 2 labetalol hydrochloride tablets bcs1 option so these are just for your easy understanding and other products you can check which may or may not have the bcs based options but once you get the information for availability of bcs based option in these guidelines or guidances or bio recommendations then it will be easy for you to directly go for biowaver approach then the drug product is same doses form and strength as per the reference product the test product should be in the same doses form and same strength if you change the doses form or strength then it will be difficult to justify the eligibility and if strength is changed then there will no biowaver if highest single therapeutic dose does not meet the high solubility criteria but the highest strength of the reference product is soluble under the required conditions then bcs based biowaver can be supported based on the demonstration of dose proportional pharmacokinetics like auc and cmax over a dose range that includes the highest single therapeutic dose so the simple meaning of this statement is that if the highest strength is like 100 mg and highest therapeutic dose is 300 mg like three tablets or three capsules of 100 mg are taken at a time and if 300 mg strength or 300 mg api does not meet the solubility criteria but the 100 mg of the highest strength meets the criteria then you can justify based on the linear pharmacokinetics then drug products with buccal or sublingual absorption are not eligible the bcs based bioer approach is applicable only when the mode of administration includes water if administration without water is also intended like oro dispersible products a bioequivalence study in which the product is dosed without water should be conducted like the formulation is taken with a 250 ml of water for those products bcs based biowar are applicable but if the product is oro dispersible tablet and administered without water then for the these type of products the bioequivalent study is required then considering the bcs classes without without understanding these bcs classes we cannot understand the bioequivalent requirements so the classes i have divided into two parts like high solubility and low solubility so these low solubility apis are not granted bcs bioequivalents because high solubility is must to apply for bcs based bioequivalents so bcs class 1 and 3 have high solubility these two classes and bcs class 2 and 4 have low solubility now out of these high solubility classes bcs class 1 is having high solubility and high permeability and bcs 3 is having high solubility and low permeability so for these two two classes the rate limiting step will be permeation like consider the bcs class 1 here the solubility high and permeability is also high so if you match the dissolution then it will behave like a solution 
and that's why the BCS BioWare is granted. Then coming to the low, low, low permeability API class, that is BCS class 3. Here, solubility is high and permeability is low. And if you match the dissolution like innovator and if you meet the other criteria as per the requirements, then rate limiting step will be permeability. And permeability is not dependent on the formulation. That's why the BCS based biovers are given to BCS class 3 also. So, hope this is clear now. Now, BCS based biover as an alternative bioequivalence approach. So, this is given for the products which contain BCS 1 or 3 drugs. And the B is self evident if the formulation behave as solution and dissolution is fast. So, some requirements are there. These requirements will be discussed in very detail. Some same drug concentration. The product should have same drug concentration that is label claim strength as per the RLD or reference product. The product contain BCS class 1 or 3 drugs with high solubility. The dissolution is rapid for BCS class 1 that is above 80% release in 30 minutes and very rapid for BCS class 3 that is above 80% in 15 minutes. So 80% is similar only the time is different. This is very rapid and this is rapid. Very rapid for BCS class 3 and rapid for BCS class 1. Then absence of excipient or ingredients which may affect absorption. Like uh, some excipients are there like mannitol and uh, sorbitol then some surfactants which may affect the absorption. So the, the excipients are not present or if present they are meeting the criteria of similarity. Then qualitative and quantitative similarity to the RLD that is Q1 mainly required for BCS1 and Q1 and Q2 are must for BCS3 with some percent differences allowed to prove the similarity. Then the drug substance sameness. The drug substance should be same in the test and reference. If the test contained contains drug substance different from the RLD, then the BCS based buyer cannot be granted. Then solubility should be high. Permeability may be high for BCS1 and low for BCS3. Drug substance uh, should be stable in the GI tract. Drug product composition should meet the criteria for composition similarity Q1 and Q2. Dissolution required to be rapid for BCS1 and very rapid for BCS3. Then in detail we will study each of the requirements. Drug substance, it should be same in the test and reference. Different salt can be considered if both belong to BCS class 1 that is high solubility and high permeability. But if the different ester ether isomer mixture of isomer complex or derivative of the drug substances are there, these are not considered because these differences may have different bioavailabilities. Then prodrugs. Prodrug may be considered for BCS based biover when they absorb as the prodrug from intestine. Then considering the solubility criteria, the BCS volume is 250 ml. The drug should be soluble or the highest strength or highest dose should be soluble in 250 ml or less than the 250 ml of aqueous media over the pH range of 1.2 to 6.8 at 37 degrees Celsius. Then the requirements US uh, uh, requirements are given as per USFDA, EMA and WHO. Generally the requirements are same with little differences. For USA the pH is from 1 to 6.8 and also the pH is required near to pH equal to pK of the drug. PH, or pH is equal to pK plus 1, pH is equal to pK minus 1 and at pH 1 and 6.8. So this range should be covered for solubility studies to prove the high solubility. Then from EMA, within 1 to 6.8, preferably at pH 1.2, 4.5 and 6.8 plus pK 
if within 1 to 6.8. Sometimes the pK of the drug is outside this pH range of 1 to 6.8. That time it is not possible to perform the solubility study at that pH. Like example, we can consider a drug substance with pK of 12. We cannot uh, perform the pH solubility study at pH 12 plus 1 minus plus minus 1 and at 12. So if it is within the pH 6 to within the pH of 1 to 6.8, then it will be easy. Similar condition is given by who? Method is shake flask method or other justified method. Volume and temperature is nearly same to all the regions like soluble in 250 ml or less at 37 degree. Quantity of the API for solubility study is highest strength for USFD. EMA requires highest single therapeutic dose. WHO also requires highest single therapeutic dose. So, if we go by the stringent requirements, then it will be easy to get grant for the BCS based biover. Like for quantity of the solubility study, we can go for highest therapeutic dose. And also, we have to study the highest strength. Then, pH measurements. USFD recommends after addition of drug, EMA recommends before and after addition of drug, and WHO doesn't provide any idea on this topic. As per the literature search made by me. So, it is good to go with the EMA requirements. We have to measure the pH before and after addition of the drug. So that we can understand is there any impact of API addition on the pH. Then coming to permeability, the extent of absorption derived from human pharmacokinetic studies that is absolute bioavailability or mass balance. High permeability if human FA is equal to or more than 85. So FA is a fraction of dose absorbed. So absolute bioavailability is a bioavailability when we compare the bioavailability by oral route versus IV route. So if the bioavailability by oral route is more than 85%, then it is highly permeable. And if it if it is less, then it will go to the criteria of BCS class 3. Permeability is assessed based on the some in vitro permeability studies. High permeability if human fraction absorbed in human is less than is greater than or equal to 85%. Human FA data based on the absolute bioavailability or mass balance study. In vivo intestinal perfusion studies in humans. So it can be also assessed by validated and standardized in vitro methods using CACO2 cells. If high permeability is not demonstrated, the drug substance is considered to have low permeability for BCS classification 3. Then coming to the drug substance stability in the GI tract. Drug substance should be stable in the GI environment and for that the drug substance stability is checked in the gastric fluid for 1 hour and in intestinal fluid for 3 hours. And that drug substance is stable if there is no degradation or there is no significant degradation that is less than 10%. If the degradation is less than 10%, then we can say the drug substance is not having significant degradation in the GI tract. And this is required because if the drug product gets degraded into the GIT, then its bioavailability will be decreased. Then coming to dissolution, dissolution for BCS class 1 is above 85% in 30 minutes and class 3 above 85% in 15 minutes. That is very rapid. The general conditions are given. Basket USP apparatus 1 at 100 RPM or paddle at 50 RPM or paddle at 75 RPM, 75 RPM when appropriately justified. If there is coning, then we can justify the 75 RPM, but not above that. Volume is 500 ml and 900 ml as per the ICH M9. Media requirement is 
the three pH medias are required like 0.1 normal SCL, simulated gastric fluid without enzyme, pH 4.5 buffer and 6.85 6.8 buffer. Surfactants are not required to be added, and organic solvents are not required to be added. If you are adding surfactant for dissolution, that means your drug is not that much soluble. Enzyme can be used if gelatin capsule shells are there. Number of units are 12 and sampling times recommended are 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. But for your understanding and for data generation, we can have the time points after 30 minutes also like 45 minutes and 60 minutes. And generally these time points are kept. Dissolution similarity demonstration required if the percent release within 30 minutes but later than 15 minutes and not required if percent release in within 15 minutes. So it is very simple now. If you are having a BCS class 1 drug and if it releases the drugs drug in 20 minutes that time we have to prove the similarity for dissolution otherwise it is not required if in 15 minutes the release is above 85 percent and that means that uh, dissolution is very rapid and thus the dissolution similarity is demonstration is not required then coming to the composition q1 and q2 first of all we have to consider the similar composition to reference product if the excipients are there which affect the absorption like mannitol sorbitol and surfactants like sls these are to be considered very critical the excipient amount mechanism of effect on the absorption should be considered and based on that the test product composition is required to be set for bcs class 1 generally the q1 is required and if possible, Q2 should be kept similar to the reference product. If the composition contains the excipients which may have impact on the absorption, then this should be limited within the 10% cumulative difference. Then for BCS class 3 drugs, the Q2 requirements is very much important and are compulsory. So these information are available in the guidelines. You can go there and understand in detail. Considering uh, the 10% difference of excipient in the reference product, the cumulative difference of this excipient should be within 10%. The compositional requirements for BCS class 3 are stringent compared to BCS class 1 drug products for BCS based biover. Here I have taken this table from ICH M9 guideline which gives you excipient class and percent of the amount of excipient in the reference. So per excipient you will get 10% difference. Some of the differences should not exceed the 10%. Then individually the guideline gives the levels of excipients on individual basis. If filler is there, then 10% change can be done. Disintegrant like starch have 6%, others have 2%, binder have 1%, lubricant have 0.5% if it is steroid and if any other, then 2%. Then glidant, if it is talc, it is 2%. If it is other than talc, then 0.2%. And the total change permitted for all excipients, including the excipient which may affect the absorption is 10%. So if you are going beyond the 10% individually or cumulatively, then the BCS biover cannot be granted or it may require the solid justification to prove the test product is similar in composition to the reference product. So in this video, we have seen the Requirements for BCS based bioweaver like API sameness, then similarity to the composition and dissolution. So now we will see the importance and advantage of bioweavers. 
the cost of these studies is high so if you get the bio over the cost of development will be reduced then time is required in b studies is also more so that can be saved human exposure to the drugs under b studies human exposure to the drugs can be decreased as the bioover is granted then there is no need to perform the b studies bioover involves the best use of established ibibc and the science bioover bioover if these are granted to your product and if your product is eligible to the bioovers then the development may, may, may be faster and the product will reach to the market at a faster speed so in summary we have seen the bioover meaning different types and we have discussed the bcs bioover in detail so i hope now you might be clear with the bcs based bioover if anything is required you can comment me many of the videos are also uploaded uh, on the channel pharma learning in depth so thanks for watching the video do like share and subscribe thank you